Well, Shannon, welcome to the show and Sexy Marriage Radio. It's so good to see you again because uh, we've got the chance where I was on your show uh, recently, too. So we already know about each other a little bit. So well, welcome. It's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. What a great episode. So thank you for being on my show. I loved it. Absolutely. Well, then let's let's dive right in uh, with this one, too, with uh, because your world that uh, how I came across you was uh, with the concept of jealousy, uh, which is so mm -hmm. easy and at times rampant to have happen in our lives and in relationships. So how in the world did you land here? And then let's start unpacking. Yeah. Uh, what do we do that's best to help combat that? Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, if you would have asked me, you know, or told me seven or seven or eight years ago that I'd be helping other people overcome jealousy, I would have said, uh, I don't think so. No way, because <laughs> I suffer from it myself big time. Um, and, you know, also, I thought I was the only one. And I think that okay. that's a big part of it. I, I thought I was the only one that had these extreme thoughts or worries or concerns about my partner. I thought I was the only one with a part-time job of looking in his phone, you know, or social media or text and email. I, I wish I would have got paid for those days, but unfortunately not. So I just thought I was kind of on an island by myself. And I didn't, I, I also just thought this is just how I am. It's part of my DNA. It's just who I am. So uh, and so real, real quick, in, in, yeah. in your journey, just to pry for a moment, is this something, wh were there some things that kind of brought it about? Or is this a natural, it's all, you've always had more of a leaning towards that? Yeah. So I grew up in a very chaotic and violent environment. My father was an alcoholic. And at the age of 12, my parents divorced me and my little brother were doing, you know, just like you see, we're waiting at the window for my dad to show up on Saturday to come and pick us up. And he wouldn't show and he wouldn't show. And weekend wow. after weekend, that would happen. And all the while he was saying, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm in AA. I'm working on my drinking. I haven't drank in this long. And he would share the coins and all the things that you get. And then he finally showed up on a Saturday to pick us up and he had a beer in his lap, you know going to pick up me and my little brother and drive us across town. And at that time I was only 12. And I said, you know what? I, I don't want to have anything to do with you as long as you're still drinking. I didn't know he would take it to heart, but he did. I didn't talk to him again until I was 25 and then hmm. not again. And that was just briefly. And then not again until just these last three years, which unfortunately was also the last three years of his life. Okay. So because of that, just that fear, you know, I told myself this story that, well, if my own father doesn't love me, why would anyone else, you know, I'm okay. not worthy of love. And so in all of my adult relationships, there was certainly a behind, you know, that story was playing behind the scenes and I was jealous. I would either stay too long in relationships with people who just weren't good because I was insecure. You know, I didn't know my worth. I didn't think I was I had any worth. And then I would, you know, really um, damage some relationships with my jealousy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's because it, your work ties worth and jealousy real yeah. cleanly and, and closely together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to know, you have to understand, I mean, we're worthy of it. What I found in doing my own research and how do I get through this? Because there's not a lot of people that actually talk about jealousy. It's one of those emotions that people feel really embarrassed about. You know, it's not something I'm, we're not putting it on our social media or our uh, right. dating profiles. Like I'll look through <laughs> your phone, choose me, you know, I'll question you on a daily yeah. basis. We're not yeah. doing that. It's embarrassing to talk about. So, um, you know, one of the things that I realized in this journey and doing research and just trying different things for myself, like, does this work? Does this work? How do I get out of these insecure habits that I'm doing? I realized, wait a second, this story that's running in the background that I'm not worthy of love, you know, my father, it wasn't that he didn't love me. He had a disease and his problem with alcohol has nothing to do with my worthiness of love. Or my okay. worthiness as a person. 
So it's really kind of how do we get to the root? You know, what is the root of the right. jealousy? And that's where we right. really start. Okay. Right. And so, so in one instance, then you're just talking about how do you flip this to where it starts to recognize my own self worth and power Yeah. that that's underneath, because obviously in some regards it can be skewed or non-existent. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'm guessing from the people you work with, because this is definitely some of the clients I, I see, and as well as uh, listeners of, of the show that there can easily be a, I wasn't jealous until something happened in my marriage. And then it kind of brings it all out. And so in essence, though, how you get there doesn't matter as much as what you do once you're there. Is that fair yeah. to say? <laughs> it is. Yeah, because we don't always have to figure out like exactly when did this start and where did this come from and all of those things. It certainly might be helpful to figure out like, okay, what is the story that I'm telling myself? Sure, we can dig into that. But yeah, you're right. We don't have to necessarily know that. It's just, well, how do I move forward? How do I overcome this? What do I do? Step one. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's go there because I think that's what's so important because it's so... My experience with this uh, is when there is an insecurity and it plays out this way, because I think in some regards we all have insecurities, but then they play out in a variety of different ways. But when yeah. it plays out in a jealous thread, man, it's destructive for both parties. Yeah. I mean, it's it's incredibly intricate in how it impacts both parties and neither are necessarily fully to blame versus it's just part of a dynamic that is really troublesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And thank you for bringing that up because I did get to the point in my own relationship where my husband was like, I feel like I can't even, I can't even look up. I can't even look, you know, around a room without that popping up. Are you feeling that way? So step one really is understanding that this is a you thing. This is a huh. me thing that I need to handle. I say, you know, jealousy is not the problem. Jealousy is a solution. It's saying, hey, there's something that you need to go look at. And it is not outside of you. I hear okay. sometimes people say, well, if he didn't, you know, if he didn't look at her or if he wasn't doing these right. things, then I wouldn't feel jealous. We're never going to know if our partner is going to cheat on us or not. We don't have a magic, you know, crystal ball to say, are we going to be together forever for the rest of our lives? We don't know. Right. So forget about trying to answer that question. It is, the question is, why is this driving my life? Why am, why am I having such anxiety around this? And so it starts with you. Mm -hmm. you know, because in, it's, it's almost like you start seeing the cues in how you are reacting to things as when it, it tell me if I'm, I'm speaking for you here in some regards, I think that when I recognize I'm looking for something from somebody else to help me feel better about me. Yeah. Yeah. That's an issue. That's an issue. Your partner cannot be, re, cannot reassure you all right. the time. That is not the right. job of a partner. That's exhausting for them. You know, that, that may be, would have, should have happened with our parents, not our partners. That's not what they're there for. Okay. Okay. And so when you see these things that are kind of like cues that, all right, I got something going on with me here. Yeah. What's next? Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is, okay, let's get some awareness around it. And what I say is, you know, you can't, you can't move what's in your way until we really get a handle on those insecure things that we think do and say. So we have these think, do, say. Um, do, those are easy and people can really identify them. And I say, get, pull out your pen and paper and just let's start doing, let's go through. Think, do, say, what are you doing? So doing, that's looking at their phone. Maybe you're looking them up on location services. You're checking social media. Let's write all of those down. Those are habits. Those are insecure habits that okay. you are doing. What are things that you're saying? My favorite one was, you know, if my if my partner would say, oh, remember last year when we went here? And if I didn't remember right away, I'd be like, oh, that must have been your other girlfriend. So 
that's the other piece of, okay, what are things that you're saying? One, what people realize is, oh, I'm really getting those digs in a lot. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how often I'm kind of poking my partner and telling them, hey, I don't trust you. I don't think you're a good person. When we say those things, you know, that comment just looking at it on the surface might not sound horrible, but it's very damaging to a relationship. So, well, that there's say, an element, then, there's, an, there's an element of that, that if that's what I'm getting coming my way, then I'm going to most likely eventually respond in kind. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're, they're like, okay, wait, I'm constantly getting attacked here. I'm going to attack back. Yeah. I'm going to have some not so nice things to say back when you say those things to me, because it hurts my feelings that you don't trust me. It hurts my right. feelings that you are thinking that way of me when I haven't done anything to warrant that. Right. For sure. Okay. And then the think part really goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, you know, is there a story that you're telling yourself? Is there something, a lot of times we don't do that inventory of our, our beliefs that, you know, we developed as a way to, you know, survive certain circumstances. We don't do inventory of that enough. So, well, what are the thoughts? What are things that I'm saying to myself? Let me get those out on paper too. And then once you have the thing to say out there, okay, let's start making some changes and we got to get out okay. of habits that we're doing. Okay. Is there one of the three that's easier to start? Or yeah, you recommend I usually, and see beneficial of starting? Where I usually start is the do. So that's, are you checking the phone? Are you looking up yeah. on location? Are you doing those things? And where we start is let's pick one that you think might be the easiest for you to give up because we want okay. some momentum. We want some yep. wins and that's small good. successes. It's all about that. So let's pick one of those. And you can do all of the other 16 or 27 things on your list, but you're not allowed to do that one thing. Right. What people realize then as they start them, you know, I'm going to start one at a time is, oh, that's actually really freeing. I'm not spending my time doing that. Now, I might have checked it, you know, 10 times a day. For those 10 times today, I was able to focus at work. I was able to be present with my child. I didn't have that sick feeling, that nervous feeling of like, oh my gosh, what am I going to find? Because as you know, and definitely I'm more experienced in this than me, if what you want is actually happening, like you're, you're, what you want is that your partner is being faithful to you. If that's true, you are never going to find something. Right. You, you can't prove fidelity. Right. So you would just keep have to keep checking forever if right. what you really want is happening, right? Yeah. And so let me add a caveat here because I'm curious, Shannon, is there a difference then between how that unfolds for somebody that that's just kind of been a pattern for a long period of their life? You know, because there are people that, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a whole lot more untrusting of others and insecure about relationship status because of childhood, because of whatever. But then you get the scenarios mm -hmm. that are also all, often mm -hmm. common of, I had a betrayal, right? And, and it was a tr traumatic yeah. wounding of me. And now all of a sudden I become hyper vigilant to ensure it's not happening again or me. Cause that's the thing I hear all the time. Like when I talk to clients and this is a, th a thread yeah. and the idea of checking a phone is regular occurrence. And I'm like, okay, um, what, what would happen if you stopped? And they were like, well, I couldn't, I have to, I, because it's almost like the safety thing. That's the motivation or, yeah. or, or whatever, but it's still, they don't see the cost in it. And so is there a difference in that scenario? Potentially a little bit, but I would say no. it's, it's still very much the same because the person who has been untrusting their whole lives, they're just untrusting in, in any way and they have to change that. And it's sort of the same thing of, yes, and to be, to be fair, if you had that dysfunction growing up, you probably have been and chosen people who maybe 
that it ended Absolutely. up they, that there was some infidelity, right? Like, Absolutely. That's something we're probably drawing. But going back to your scenario of, okay, this actually happened to me. And it was, you know, we were together 23 years and I found out that this person was having a, an affair. So then what? Uh, I don't ever want that to happen to me again. Part of what we have to understand is, well, yeah, you know, that's okay. That mm -hmm. that's human nature to want to protect yourself and not want to experience those feelings again. So that is, so that is some hard work where we have to go, okay, this is my brain and my body reacting to, hey, this looks really familiar. Even if it's not like, oh, they were, they took their phone with them to the other room. That happened. That my partner was doing mm -hmm. that when I found out that they cheated. So that's natural. Your body's going to go, hey, this looks really familiar. We have to learn to be able to distinguish those things that this is a protection mechanism that yeah. I'm doing. And to your point about, um, well, we have to learn then to go, one, this is a different person. This is a different scenario. And is it worth the, co you know, the cost, as you said, am I going to spend every day feeling right. sick at my stomach? not being able to do things, feeling anxious, worried all the time, or am I going to go, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let this go and I'm going to enjoy every day. And if it happens, then I will deal with it then. Because the, the false statement that we tell ourselves is like, well, if I'm, if I'm constantly protecting or preparing, you know, I'm preparing myself, mm -hmm. I'll be able to handle it or I'll know better if I'm preparing. It still feels, it doesn't, it still feels yeah. just as crappy if it happens, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, hurt is hurt. You know, devastation is devastation. Yeah. There's, I get you because that's that's the scenario to me that I think is so such a valuable message that you have in the sense that this goes back to what you said early on in our conversation, in that um, we can't ever have a complete assurances from somebody else with fidelity. We can get an idea of when it's present yeah. because I, I use the idea kind of like you're describing too. Is fidelity is fully showing up. It's not just the lack of betrayal. <laughs> it's it's fully showing mm, up and being so present. good. That's, yeah, that's fidelity. Infidelity is a breaking yeah. of that that bond, right, and that commitment. But it's that element of I can't get assurances from another person enough. It really, there's always mm -hmm. a gap or a bridge that ha that's where faith comes in. That's where trust yeah. comes in. That's where energy resides actually in our, in our relationships, because otherwise if we're mm. too close, it's smothering because you, you're always under a microscope and micromanaged. Right. And so yeah, it, it's so interesting to point that out. And that sounds like that's kind of what you do in a lot of ways is just let's point out a dynamic and also what's going on underneath with you, which is so, so good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, I love that the energy piece, too, because that's another thing that we do is we like to suffocate when we're not trusting when we are have this extreme jealousy, we like to suffocate, we like to be very controlling. Because we think if I know all the details going back to that, like if I know all the details, or I can control situations, then I'm going to be able to prevent this from happening. Right. Right. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good, good it, luck uh, with being able to control someone else. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that scenario of, is there another human being involved? Okay. Well then we got trouble possibly. <laughs> it's just going to happen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so when you're talking about, so I, I love this, the this, this strategy of just, let's get a clearer picture. Yeah. And at the same time, you're going to start to get an uncovering of my narrative that maybe started this because that's the think, that's the belief. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now in all, in some regards to me, it's like now the real heavy lifting starts. <laughs> right. Because now we got to change our thought patterns. We have to change um, our habits. Yeah, those are all things. One of the really great things, and and you know, I started this on my own, and I've then sort of passed it to my clients, 
is the power of one O N E and that's being open to new. And then you kind of fill in the blank with the explanation, evidence, experience, whatever that E word is. I have some okay. that even are like, I'm, I've moved beyond that. I've got, I'll use any letter of the alphabet and that's fine. The idea is, okay, I thought this way, I thought this one thing, what are the other possibilities? Like, okay, this yeah. is the way that I normally think. Yeah. And I always say, you know, usually our first thoughts are wrong, you know, when we're, when we're in that fear mode, because we're in protection mode and this is like, Hey, this is kind of triggering, or this is, this looks familiar. It's usually wrong. That first thought is usually wrong. So, okay. What are some other possibilities? And when you open yourself up to other possibilities, you can see that, okay, that's just one thought of what it could be. There might be five or 10 other possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's good. And so I, I, I want to pull one part out you just said, because I think this is really important in the sense that, because I'm guessing you'll kind of have the same experience. Somebody would come along and then they would feel like what's ha what they're being asked to do is just take away all their safety net, right? Because if you look at it objectively, that's the motivations for uh, the constant checking, constant assurance, <laughs> con constant, you know, just check in, if you will, on the yeah. status of things. So I'm, I'm taking away your safety nets. And so what would happen to me with a lot of people, I think we get into the scenario of, yeah, but what do I do when I get these feelings, these senses where now they're hiding their phone again? Now they're right. Because mm -hmm. what you described is you air it. You just don't attack with it. Yeah. Is that fair right. in the sense of, hey, this is familiar. And I'm just yes. wanting that to be known that it feels familiar. I'm not accusing. I'm just kind of trying to point out that this feels because I love the power of when I take on myself in the presence of somebody else, it really mm -hmm. is a good energy source for both. Yeah. You're going to get a different, definitely different response. If you're going in accusatory, like you did this, I know this, this is what you're doing to me versus, uh, you know, I've struggled with this and this is coming up for me again. And this is the, this is what I'm telling myself. And this is what I'm, fearful of. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm afraid of. I think people can relate on a human, you know, human to human when someone is afraid, when someone feels fear, it's a little bit easier to go, oh, you know, like, yeah. oh, I, I hate that you are, are, you know, feeling that fear or feeling afraid yeah. versus like, yeah. what are you talking about? I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Right, because oftentimes accusat accusations and accusatory tones are just usually felt with defensiveness and explanations, which just further <laughs> further fuel a dynamic. Yes. And, uh, you know, to point out, fear and intuition feel very different. And I think people get those confused a lot. Like, oh, because it feels so strong yeah, when That's a great there's... clarification. Yeah, because it when something like that pops up where it's like, oh, this looks really familiar to something else I experience, it feels so strong in our body and in our mind that we think it must be true. Like there right. must be something here because I keep feeling this way. I keep, you know, this keeps coming up and people get that really confused with intuition. And I just want to sort of talk about the difference if that's okay. Please. Of, yes. That's worth unpacking. Yeah. So when we talk about fear, like that's fear, you can almost just even feel the difference of, or hear the difference in the words. Fear feels really heavy. If you're going into these situations where like, oh, I'm, was, I'm already worried about this event that they're going to, I'm already worried about guys night out or girls night out. And then on girls night out or guys night out, you're you're in that mode of like, oh, I, you know, they haven't texted in two hours. I wonder what they're doing or, oh, they're right. at a restaurant. Or, I thought they were going somewhere else. And now they're, that is fear. That's fear. It's constant. You're already sick about it. You're, you're already thinking ahead. Intuition, that's going to pop up when you're in the shower and you weren't even thinking anything about it. It's very light. It's yeah. just comes to you 
not when you're kind of in the depths of like, I'm already searching. That's huge because I think that makes the difference because that's, that's, I, I'm, I'm going to be using this phraseology with clients, by the way, Shannon, because I use, <laughs> uh, I, I, that's very succinct. And I, I've always fallen into the world of, because you get the question of, but how, I, I just can't open them myself to the possibility this happens again, right? I can't. And so it's, it's fear-based, it's protection, it's safety, it's whatever. Yeah. And so I always use a little bit of a different framework yeah. in the sense of mm -hmm. saying the same thing, which yeah. is, How you know what? How will I know? <laughs> it, yeah, it will. I would, I would use the idea of, hey, if it happens again, or if there's the chance, you can always rely on the stupidity of humans because we just can't keep things hidden as people. We just can't. If, if you're paying attention at all, it, it comes out, <laughs> right? And so the way I pay right. attention most, as you're describing, is I settle myself down to watch, to be in tune, mm. and then intuit what's going on. And so I love yes. that idea because it kind of so good. something strikes you. Something strikes you as because... like hey, something's off that's deeper here. So I need to bring this forward. That's huge. Yes. So good because, yeah, if you're already thinking it, if you're already in the depths of like, I'm going through all their stuff or I'm, you know, I'm keeping track of this or I'm so focused on that, you, you might be missing the big picture, right? Like, how are you right. actually supposed to notice differences because you're not present with that yeah. person? You're not present in the moment. You're not seeing the things happening around you. So, yeah, so good. Oh, man, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm just the differences between fear and intuition. That's worth all. That's gold. That's all of it right there. That's yes. a huge that's right. part of how we are. That's good. Well, Shannon, how, how can people find you and, and do more uh, with what you do and, and all that you offer? Yeah. So two ways. One, they can go to my website, which is just topself.com. Um, there's some freebies there for them. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and I have a great group coaching program called Trust Building Boot Camp. Uh, and then I have the podcast, which you are a guest on, and that'll be coming out uh, very soon. The podcast is also called Top Self. Perfect. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for uh, the time here and the work you're doing because it's so, it's so valuable. Yeah, you as well, Corey. Thanks so much for having me.